Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. You can always watch our recordings. We can record the show every week, and our archives are available right here on our home, our main Encompass Live page. Underneath, there's a link right here to our archive shows underneath our upcoming shows, so you can always watch them there. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, uh, anyone you think who may be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Uh, for those of you who are not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries. Uh, in other states, that would be your state library. Um, probably, call, probably called your state library. So we provide services to all sorts of libraries in the state, uh, training, consulting, grants, et cetera. Um, so you will find things on our show for all sorts of libraries, uh, academics, K-12s, publics, um, corrections, special museums, general archives, uh, really it just runs the gamut. Our, really, our only criteria is that it is something for libraries, something libraries are doing, something cool we think they could be doing, um, all sorts of things you'll find on our show. Uh, sometimes we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that do presentations of things that are specific to uh, resources or services we're offering uh, through the commission, and sometimes we bring in guest speakers um, from uh, across Nebraska and across the country. Uh, before we pop into today's show, I'm going to do a quick reminder, as I've been doing every week, uh, since March, uh, we are still in the height of the uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Um, yes, there is vaccine, yay, uh, but it's going to be months and months before that is um, completely, everyone has that and it takes, um, fixes everything. So we still have here on our, we have been since March on our Library Commission website gathering resources to help our libraries deal with how to deal with the pandemic. We have a list here of Nebraska libraries, who's open, who's closed, uh, what kind of special services are they offering, curbside pickup, et cetera, but um, also now who's reclosed with flare-ups, libraries who had opened are now closing. Um, trying to keep that as up to date as we can. If you're a Nebraska library, let us know if we have any need to change any of your library's info. Um, but I'll show you here on our um, this post that's there at the top of our Library Commission webpage. This is pinned here to the top of our page. It'll always be there right um, first for you to see right when you first come to the page. And we have links to uh, maps we've put together, um, a form to submit information about your library. But then here's our sub page with different information, things you can use with your patrons help them with unemployment, homeschooling my kids, what to do for fun. Uh, but then the second link here is also specifically, I want to highlight that for you as the library, how to run things behind the scenes, closing, reopening. Um, we've tried to pay attention to and gather any information from the CDC, World Health Organization, OCLC, IMLS, uh, ALA, anybody who's putting out um, information or guidance or uh, webinars and things, we've um, put it on here. Um, specific information for school libraries. Um, here in Nebraska, something to be aware of, the Open Meetings Act. Your meetings do have to be open, but there is a one, um, our governor has made some executive orders that help make that easier, but in the Open Meetings Act itself, there has always already been a the ability um, that you can have people come in to join your meetings. This is for library board meetings via phone or video conference or Zoom or whatever. So um, I just wanna make sure that people know that that is available. It's a thing, it's right there in our Nebraska state statutes. If you're not from Nebraska, look at your own states. This is Nebraska. <laughs> so I um, just wanna make sure everybody knows this information is there for our libraries. A lot of this information is for anybody, so everybody's welcome to come to this page. But um, check with your local, your own state library or your state library association. They may be doing the same thing for you as well. So let's get into today's show now. I am going to hand over presenter control to you, Amber, so you should okay. now see that pop up to bring up your slides. All right, we oh. do see that. Look at your screen. Right. Yep, I see it. And we are doing main screen, right? That's what we decided was best. Uh, whichever one has a little glowy thing on it. Yeah, it'll it'll show you. All right. Not the right sure. one, I'll tell you and let you know. Pick one. There we go. It is, it is showing my screen. And I'm going <laughs> to pop this over to do presentation. Hold on. Oh, that's me. Move me. Move. No, no problem. To present. 
Is it slowly? There we go. There we go. All right. So this morning with us, we're going to talk about teens, teen volunteers. Yay. I love those. <laughs> uh, Amber Loveless is from the Queens Public Library in uh, New York City, um, New York being my home state. Yay. <laughs> uh, and uh, she's going to talk to us about how she's worked with her teens. And so I will uh, get them to volunteer and um, help out at the library with all sorts of things. So I'm just going to hand it over to you, Amber, to take it away and take it away and tell us what you've been doing. Okay, thank you. Um, so just to let you know, I have reduced my um, our, our go to web thing, so I cannot see it at yes. all. That's so fine. I yeah. remind you for everything else. Okay. Um, I will keep on everything from my side for you. No problem. Thank you so much. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you for all all of you for tuning in today, uh, and thank you to Krista at the Nebraska Library Commission for inviting me here to talk with you about leading teen volunteers. Uh, as Krista said, my name is Amber Loveless. I'm an assistant manager for Queens Public Library at the Queensboro Hill branch. I am also a teen librarian. Um, before I worked for Queens Public Library, I spent three years as a volunteer coordinator, and I've been a volunteer myself for several years. I hope you'll find my experiences helpful as you're growing your own teen volunteer programs. Um, so this is a bit weird because this presentation was originally created back in February and I gave it for the Public Library Association Conference. So in a way, it's kind of a time capsule because, because Queens Public Library is not having volunteers in person anymore. And so what we've done is we've taken this and, and done our best to transform it into, um, into a virtual program but what i'm hoping is that you will still get things out of it i mean volunteers will come back eventually i don't know what your situation is maybe your maybe your library is having volunteers um now but because this is being recorded i think that it, you know down the line when volunteers come back it's going to be something you might watch again um, but for now, let's consider it kind of a time capsule, but with the idea that we are working towards adapting this into a virtual environment. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about that as as, as we go along too. Which so, I think both I think both of those ways of doing it will help people long into the future, because um, I know we're learning that um, a lot of work is that is being done uh, because you have to from home actually works from home. Yeah. So this might be another way of getting volunteers. They don't always have to come to the library. Even after all this is over, there's things that you can create and come up with that they can do as a remote volunteer. Yeah, that's what we're that's what we're finding. And and a lot of the themes that are coming from this volunteer program, they do adapt into the virtual mm -hmm. world. Um, so this model for a teen volunteer program, it needs someone who likes teens to run it. And it also helps if you enjoy spreadsheets. If you don't like teens and you hate spreadsheets, this probably is not the right program model for you. But if you have <laughs> any interaction with volunteers, I do think you'll find the presentation valuable. So all the slides you're gonna to see today, and in fact, the entire PowerPoint, um, are pictures taken by the volunteers and made by the volunteers of the volunteers. So they have asked me to point things out to you because they're very proud of their work. And I am happy to do that because I am very proud of them. Now, several of my team volunteers are still with us. Um, we're all figuring out together this virtual thing uh, in partnership with many of my colleagues at Queens Public Library. In particular, I want to recognize Melissa Milanic, who is coordinator of teen services, Rafael Ortiz, who is my co-chair in the YA programming committee, and also runs the uh, co-runs the um, teen advisory board that we just created together with me, uh, and also Scott McLeod and Delisi Caraballo, who are the Queens Public Library Volunteer Services Department of the thousand or so volunteers that Queens Public Library has. Uh, these two make sure that everything runs runs smoothly among them. Now, I began with three volunteers in 2018. They had a three-month commitment, two hours per week. Then one girl came and asked if she could do 25 hours in two weeks. She swore 
She would continue for the two and a half months after that. I was hesitant because the onboarding process for volunteers is a long one at Queens Public Library, especially for teens because they have to do different forms. Of, we have we have what I don't know other states do this, but we have what they call work working papers. Or if you're if you're young, we um, have those too in Nebraska. Yes, they have yeah, to they special a lot. <laughs> because of their age. Yep, exactly. Um, so I said yes, but you can uh, you can probably guess what happened. Um, <laughs> she quit via email the like, the second her 25 hours were up. So. After her, I took an assessment of the ratio of my work input versus my value gained, and it wasn't in my favor. So I decided I needed to make a change to the volunteer program. And the main problem is that at that time, it was not a program. So around that time, one of my regulars, one of my just teens who wasn't a volunteer, who just came in every day, he asked if he could volunteer to get service credits for graduation and he needed to do work that involved animals. As it happened, I had a program called Pamper Shelter Pet, where teens make toys for animals living at a local adoption shelter. So it was an easy thing to do that required basically no effort on my part. After this, I decided to incorporate projects into the volunteer program. So I hoped it would give the teens more autonomy and ownership of their volunteering experience. So, this brings us to the Queensboro Hill Teen Volunteer Program. So the mission of the Queensboro Hill Teen Volunteer Program is to provide positive enriching work experiences for teens and encourage friendship, collaboration, a sense of individual accomplishments and a better understanding of Queens Public Library. Again, time capsule, this doesn't happen anymore, but at that time, Teen volunteers were expected to attend a monthly group meeting and to complete a monthly report. They had a daily checklist to complete as well as a special project. So the current incarnation started in January, 2019. Right now I have 29 teens from 12 high schools. Since we stopped on-site volunteering, not all of them are currently active. Overall, I've had 37 volunteers, almost all of the teens who've left did complete their requirements. The ones who didn't, they maintain regular communication with me and the doors always open for them to come back. Four of them who completed their requirements, they came back. Two were hired by the library and of my original three, two are still with us. So that's a big change from that girl who disappeared after an email. So here we have a few of my, of my volunteers. They, they staged all of their photos. So some of these are kind of unintentionally and some intentionally hilarious, but they staged all their photos. And it just makes me just so happy to look at these right now. Um, but they're uh, organizing magazines, doing homework help. And I don't know what Suzanne and Mavis are doing in the first picture. I think they're pretending to be planning something, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so let's talk a little bit about Roblox. But first, this this is Karen, and Karen is Karen basically did the PowerPoint presentation along with along with another boy, Derek. And when I when I asked Karen if she knew how to do if she knew anything about PowerPoint, I, I've never seen a teenager happier in my life is when I asked Karen that question. So so yeah, okay. Um, so I talked to other library staff about their issues in developing successful teen volunteer programs. And here are the most common problems that I heard and certainly that I experienced for myself. Problem one, it's not worth the time and effort. Problem two, the teens don't commit. And problem three, the teens or you lose motivation. So I was able to draw on my volunteer experiences to make positive changes. And that's why I made this presentation. That's why I'm here today is to try and, and help you. So let's talk about problem one. Um, problem one, it's not worth the time and effort. Managing teen volunteers can be incredibly rewarding, but it's also a lot of work. So what makes the volunteer program worth it to you? What do you get out of it? Some of that answer is gonna be very personal to you depending on what you want, but there are also solid benefits that we all get. 
it's developing leadership skills, meeting your goals, it's management experience. But on the teen side, why would a teen want to volunteer with you? Have you thought about it? Can you articulate it to a teen? What do they get out of it aside from service hours? So, solution. Let's make the uh, let's make this rewarding. So, so first thing guidelines. You need to understand your organization's volunteer guidelines. And if you don't have any, you need to talk to the appropriate people in your library and create them. This includes anything you need to know to keep your program running smoothly and not accidentally violate a protocol, such as required documents, the minimum time commitment for volunteers, the onboarding process and training for new volunteers, they need to know what type of behavior is expected. This is vital for teenagers, especially if they've never worked before. You need to set them up for success from the start. And we want to create a volunteer program that provides positive enriching work experiences for teens. So my original program structure, as I said, consists of daily tasks and long and short-term projects. While we don't do the daily tasks anymore, we do still have projects. So all of our tasks are inspired by the question, what, do, what can we do to make the library a welcoming space? The tasks that you decide, they should be based on what is important for you in your library. So the projects I assign are based on the teen's interests and the library's needs. The end result will either be a resource for the public or change that will make the library better. They should also be a resume booster for the team. So to give you some project examples, uh, David and Derek are working on a, on a financial literacy guide for teens. Uh, my second David, I have two Davids. My second David, he made a flyer with tips for analyzing news sources. Uh, Madison wrote a manual to help other kids understand the high school, uh, New York City high school application pro uh, process, which is I'm so like I'm so thankful for this manual. Other librarians are like, can I have this manual? Absolutely. Um, so uh, Nate said that he likes to interpret difficult text, so he analyzed and simplified the instructions of a very complicated tabletop game, so our tween gaming club could play it. Several of our volunteers help process donations. They do bulletin board displays for me. They've created special display carts that are now permanent. Uh, we have a pride card and a college card that they are responsible for for updating and they have relabeled my entire YA section. Uh, teen volunteers deliver program flyers to their schools with an introduction letter from me. Uh, this puts them on the radar uh, and, and allows them to meet rel relevant faculty in their schools. It lets me know that the faculty who don't respond to my outreach emails are actually getting my information. Uh, prior to the physical shutdown, they were reading and writing recommendations for every YA book in our collection. So my teens have a varying, um, varying levels of experience and ability, but because I've been able to match projects to their interests and because I'm able to give them time to redo things if need be, they put the effort in and they succeed. So to me, there's something very special about teenagers who want to volunteer in the library. If you are able to, give group assignments. Group work is where friendships are formed. The teens, they sort out individual strengths and contributions. I used to worry when I put all the teens together that the shy teens wouldn't be heard, but I was wrong. When you have the chance to let a group of teens work independently and then come back and see what they've done, it's wonderful. Every part of the volunteer program is designed to help teens develop their agency and create growth opportunities. I want my volunteers to be able to work independently and feel a part of a team. I have an area designated where they can find directions, they find the team checklist, that's their daily tasks, and they find any updates from me. So, and then we pair up seasoned volunteers to mentor new volunteers. Everybody writes a monthly report, it's just two paragraphs answering two questions. Did your experience this month meet your expectations? And what recommendations do you have for improving the library? 
I've even created project ideas from their monthly reports. I use feedback forms to let the teens assess me and the volunteer program. They make suggestions for changes as well as request one-on-one -on -one meetings. Our monthly meeting lets them share what they're doing and they all look forward to seeing each other. I have several teens from the same school who didn't know each other before they started volunteering. I found out since, um, since the physical shutdown that now they, now they even have a text chain uh, with each other. <laughs> so they, they have formed their friendship and they have, they have run with their friendship. So now let's talk about growth opportunities. A good volunteer program is going to help you too. This is your chance to develop your leadership skills. This is your mini staff. So for me, it turned out that I was, it was 63 hours each week of management opportunity. So you get to practice putting the needs of the library into a context that can be converted into duties and projects for the volunteers. You will develop relationships with other departments you get to interact with teams in a new way. You will develop your interviewing skills and your ability to align the teen's interests with your library's needs, which ultimately gives you a fresh view of the library. Now, that seems like a lot of work. So let's talk about protecting your time. If you want a day when no one volunteers, you can have it. So last year, Wednesday was my no volunteers day. It's okay to do that. The schedule should work for you. If a teen comes to your library or emails you, whatever the situation is now, uh, and they ask you about volunteering, you give them the five minute overview, overview. That's your mission, that's the basic requirements, and that's how to apply. And then I conduct one hour group information sessions once a month for teens with completed applications. For teens who need their hours quickly, I guide them to pamper a shelter pet during our five minute meeting. They can decide if they want to volunteer officially after they're done. So, and lastly, you delegate tasks to volunteers. Give teens guidance and freedom and give yourself practice in trusting others to do their jobs well. If they do it wrong, you give feedback and you let them do it again. So it's how we learn. Do not do their work for them if they mess up. Just try and give them projects far enough in advance that if they do mess up, they can learn from it and try again. Now, problem two, the teens don't commit. I would say this is the this is um, this is their favorite slide. They are I can't just this is their favorite slide. Teens don't commit. <laughs> Running, <laughs> running. <laughs> it was it was a it was a quiet day when they um, when they when they did this. Um, sure, they had fun creating it too. Oh my goodness, they were so proud of the blurred effect. <laughs> but, <laughs> all right, so you you put all the effort into getting them cleared, and then either they don't show or they come in and they do whatever minimum amount they need for their school credits and they stop coming, even if they haven't met the time threshold that the library's volunteer program requires. So how do we help teens commit to volunteering? So in my area, um, a lot of the teens are required to earn community service hours or graduate or get into honors groups. So side note, this this board here, they made this board. It consists of all the teen programs that we had um, at, at, at the time before the, you know, before the physical shutdown. So um, anyway, so, so what does it matter if the teens think that their talents are being well used or if they aren't getting what they want out of the experience if all they really need is service credits? Well, it matters because the prime tenet of a volunteer program is this. Volunteers must be engaged to be retained. And that is true no matter what the age of the volunteer is. So we, we want to fill our teen checklist with duties that let the volunteers have a positive impact on the library. Make sure they know the reasons behind what you're asking them to do. I have a shelf reading pep talk and I, that it just brings them over to my belief that shelf reading is the most important job in the library. And they get to do it. 
and that changes their entire demeanor towards making sure books are in order. Now, mm -hmm. try to vary the projects you assign so a teen is not constantly doing the same thing. This can even be done by giving them a break from a long-term project to do something else. If the teen's interests don't match the library's needs, it is my pleasure to change that. I found it's actually because teens don't really know what libraries do. And that is true for a lot of adults too, as I'm sure many of us know. So uh, finally, acknowledge, support, and thank. Don't wait for National Volunteer Week to express your appreciation. Say thank you every time. Make a specific comment about what they did. And if you can, mention what will happen next time. So if the teen is working on a long, long-term project, you follow through with them, show you're interested in the projects is important. Brag about them in front of other people, to other people. Our monthly meetings always start with individual and group acknowledgements of jobs well done. So you can also be flexible within reason. Everyone starts with two hours per week. If they get more accustomed to volunteering and require less guidance, they can have more freedom with their hours. So that's a little giving back that we can do. I also have special pro programs for the volunteers as a way to thank them. We've done graphic novel drawing workshops and college readiness workshops with them, for example. And these are all by their request. So problem three, the teens are you loses motivation. Uh, this is self-explanatory. Even when it's something you love, there will be times when you don't want to. There are times when your teens will falter in their interest and dedication, and none of you will be putting your best foots forward. So teens need to understand, oh, okay, so the concept of this picture, which again, they made up themselves, is that the batteries are low, they have low batteries, then along comes, uh, then, then along comes someone to say uh, some encouragement to them, and now look here, their batteries are filled, are filled again. Nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was, I thought that was a good one. Um, <laughs> So again, their idea. Very so, creative, yeah. We need that for just every staff, not even teens. Yeah, I think they're so. much more creative than I am, you know. <laughs> um, so uh, teens need to understand why the things they're doing is important in the context of the library's role in the community. Uh, they and then they need to be reminded of that. And when you remind them, you are also reminding yourself. So help teens understand how the library works. Talk about command structure and different departments with them. If you can, invite the department heads to meetings so the teens can hear directly from them. Volunteer monthly reports let the teens put their contributions into their own words. These reports let teens look back on what they've done. And I've also found them incredibly useful when someone, when one of the volunteers comes to me and says, hey, can you write a recommendation? I can look their past reports, see what they've done. Absolutely, I can write a recommendation communicate goals and then give the teens ownership of them sometimes in our monthly meeting for active volunteers i'll throw a question at them and then leave the room for 20 minutes and i'll come back and see what they've come up with because sometimes they don't talk when the when when the grown, grown up is in the room they don't talk but as soon as you leave it's you know they talk so to find your motivation take a moment to remember why you were doing this so I started this because I wanted to create something valuable for teens. I wanted some extra help. And I wanted to use my three years as a volunteer coordinator to create something worthwhile. Those are my, those are my, my noble reasons. I also have fickle reasons, which are sometimes more motivating to me. Yes, I want to help teenagers develop into well-rounded, innovative, confident people. Mm -hmm. I also, have a personal dislike of creating bulletin board displays. Now I have at least 15 teenagers who love doing it. And if that's not enough reason for having a volunteer program, I don't know what is. Now I should say, I also have a wonderful teen librarian now who also enjoys doing this. So it's not like as relevant to me now, but at the time when I was the teen librarian, I was overjoyed to have teenagers <laughs> create displays for me. Now, 
it takes time to develop a program like this. It is okay to give yourself a break. You know, you can pause new volunteer intake for a month. Now that everything's virtual, we're just kind of all trying to figure out what's what's going on. It, you know, take it slowly, step by step. Everybody's just figuring out what the new what the new rules are, what the new normal is. Um, and lastly, talk to the volunteers. You might be surprised what projects they come up with that help you get your motivation back. So our big three takeaways, the most fruitful and long-term volunteer relationships occur when the volunteer feels that their talents are being used well and when they feel valued. A successful teen volunteer program is a lot of work, but what you get out of it will be wonderful. And you will develop your leadership skills, you'll keep teens involved, you'll help them develop responsibility, independence, teamwork, and innovation. You will be able to do more and you will see a positive impact on your library. So here they are, all of my volunteers. Um, so my information is on the screen. Please do take it down, please do contact me. Um, I'm happy to talk to you. If you are on a committee that's related to teen volunteer programs, I wanna know about it. Um, I think the best thing we can all do is come together and share ideas and experiences. And mm -hmm. thank you all very much. Yeah, all right. Um, I don't know if there are any. Yeah, if anybody does have any questions or comments or uh, questions about things that um, Amber has done or questions about things you've done that you might want some advice on or ideas for what you've done with your teens, with your teen volunteers or your teen advisory groups, um, uh, type into the questions section. we got a lot of time. We can do a lot of good conversation. Um, yeah. One thing I was going to comment on when you were on, um, oh, you can keep your slides up. Go ahead and keep it up there so oh. we have something on the screen. Okay, you keep so long. I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I don't mind seeing my face. <laughs> Can you, but, do you still uh, have the screen? Yeah, you should still be a yeah. presenter. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm happy to, so I'm happy just to share again, but now I've, now mm -hmm. I've forgotten how. Hang on a sec. Uh, let me. There we go. Now we're seeing your screen again. Yeah, but it's still on the exit to full screen part there. Yeah. Yeah, but you don't want that. Um, Sorry, I was having a little sneeze attack earlier too. Up to my screen. Um, screen. Hmm. Well, we may not get to see that again. Anyway, are there questions while we try and figure this out? Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. What I was gonna say when you were on your um your second last slide there about when who uh. The teens like to do the bulletin boards. That's something great, you know, working, you know, using their strengths or their interests to, even if they're not yours, or, you know, that's what we do with just library staff too. It's the same kind right. of thing. It's an extension of your staff. If you don't like doing something, or it's just not your thing. You just find someone who is really into that and say, set them at it, go for it. That's awesome. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, you know, in some ways I am just messing around the screen here because I cannot figure out how to, un how to unshare my, Here, let me do, what I'm going to do is, okay. I'm going to bring back presenter control to me, but right. then I can give you a new pop-up. Oh, much Start better. Thank scratch you. again, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> there we go, yeah, perfect. All right, present. All right, yeah. So if anybody wants me to go move, move back to a certain slide, I'm happy. I'm happy to do that. So that was just something that I thought was was great. You know, they they have their interests, the things that they would love to do. That you know, you may say, I just it's not my thing. I don't like it. It's the worst part of my job. But you know, what? it's just like with any staff. Other people love doing certain things that you don't. And you know, the thing is, when I was in my you know when I was in my twenties, I loved doing bulletin boards. But mm -hmm. uh, I'm not in my twenties anymore. And now I, I do not love doing bulletin boards. But <laughs> it's like anything, maybe you get burnt out from it, or <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Well, I think I think my interest moved more towards um, you know leadership development, and 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 away from bulletin boards. But but you the know bigger, when I was yeah the bigger picture. But you know in a way, making bulletin boards is like it's a baby step towards leadership because you mm -hmm. have ownership over that board. 
you can put whatever you want on it so long as it matches some kind of theme but you get to figure out how the theme is going to be uh is is going to be presented on the board mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. but i think yeah. yeah you know now that i have more responsibilities i don't need to express myself <laughs> in that way things everyone people you know evolve and go on to different things absolutely yeah. um all right, we do have one question, one comment question. Um, thank you for the amazing presentation, Aura says. Um, and they did, oh, she did ask, and we'll, I think this, yes. Uh, will you have slides available after the webinar? Um, I can make slides available, yeah. Um, I can send, uh, I can send to Krista. Yeah, if you want to, yeah, what we use, if, if, the, if our presenters do, are agreeable to it, we do include that when we put up the recording afterwards. So um, Amber, if you want to send me like the sharing link to your Google Slides, I can link to that. Yeah, um, I can do that. Yeah, so so yeah, so yes, we will have a link to the slides afterwards when the recording is is posted and I'll let you guys all know when that recording is ready. So you'll have access to all of that. Um, and we do have some questions coming in. Great. Um, someone wants to know, are you a multi-branch system? If yes, does your volunteer program encompass all of the branches? How is, you know, so maybe explain exactly how it works with the uh, Queens Public Library and the different locations sure. you guys have. Sure. Um, uh, yes, we uh, we are. Um, Queens Public Library is located. It's one of the boroughs of New York City. Uh, in New York City, there are three different library systems, completely separate systems. Uh, there's uh, Queens, Brooklyn, and and uh, New York Public. So Queens Queens has, I believe, 65 branches. Um, Queensboro Hill is located in the in the Flushing part of Queens. So there's the, the Flushing Library, which is one of the main libraries. It's huge. And then Queens Pub, Queensboro Hill is much smaller. Um, the presentation that you saw today is strictly uh, Queensboro Hill. Since we have gone virtual, there is, there is now, um, I guess I guess you would call it a, 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 a centralized program. So even though a lot of my teens are still are still involved, it's teens from it's teens from all over okay. Queens now. Um, so I don't know if they answered the que the question or or, or <laughs> not. Yeah, yeah. So this this program strictly this this program was for my for my personal library, but mm -hmm. now we're taking these ideas and things. And, and bringing it out and it's it's interesting because now i'm working with the with the people who who are aware of this program but we're kind of like we created a a teen advisory board and which i know a lot of libraries have and we're and we're yeah. we're having them them do projects that are kind of working on promoting the library and stuff like that um, they want to do like a newsletter and a podcast and a few other and a few other kind of social media related things. So nothing has happened yet. We've had we've had, I think like maybe three or four three or four meetings because it took us a while to kind of figure out how to do this how to do this transition. But mm -hmm. that's where people from other from other branches are involved, and where our and where volunteer services is involved, and the and the program coordinator. Mm -hmm. So did the other branches also have teen volunteers or? None of them have a program like this. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, I actually, I actually done presentations within Queens Public Library on this program. Mm -hmm. uh, none of them have a program like this, and a lot of them. And when I was preparing this presentation, I sat down with a lot of them and said, "What are your What are your main issues? Let's take a look at these together." And I looked at my program and figured out how I'd kind of gotten around these issues, mm -hmm. um, but. No, this this program is a is very organized, mm. and it's it's very organized and it's very run by me. But I but I, I try to build it so that I can hand it off uh, when when the time comes, so I can hand it off to my teen librarian, you know, if she wants it. And I try to build it so as the teens get more experienced in their volunteering, that they can work somewhat uh, autonomously. Mm -hmm. And that's also why I started the mentoring aspect of pairing the the new volunteers with the more experienced volunteers because that saves me time as well. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, 
And yeah, the one person that asked about the slides, uh, I think you could definitely, or you could reach out to Amber here at her email too. Um, she says, I'd love any information you have. I'm in charge of our branch's teen volunteer program, and I need all of the information. <laughs> well, I think I talked about all that. Omaha Public Library here in Nebraska. If you have more specific questions, I'm happy to have a conversation. Yeah, yeah, and I'll mention it while we're talking about that, and we had mentioned about the slides and everything, getting all this information. Um, we are recording, and um, the show, like I said, we post it up to the Nebraska Library Commission's YouTube channel. And when the recording is after this is done processing, and I get it uploaded to YouTube, um, and I'll have the links from Amber for the slides, um, I'll send you guys all where the recording is available, and so that you can watch it again and get the slides. Um, that should be done by the end of the week at the latest, uh, probably tomorrow. I'll get it taken care of, and, and everything you'll hear, you guys will hear from me. That that's all ready for you guys to watch and um, have the slides and the information. Yeah, but definitely reach out to Amber with any more any questions you want to know anything about more detail. Um, yeah, and you know I'm expect I'm especially interested in, in knowing what what other people are doing and if there are yeah. you know committees out there that mm -hmm. you know, that 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 are working on this on this mm -hmm. kind of thing. Same yeah. kind of it, yeah. Um, we do have another question actually that came in. Uh, what other tasks do you have volunteers to complete virtually? Uh, more ideas about virtual things that people can do. Well, the volunteer services department. This is not something that I'm doing, but but um, Scott and Delise in the volunteer services department, they have um, gathered up a, a a a teen volunteers who post on social media for them who like do little kind of influencer posts on social media about what the library is doing. Um, again, as I said, the tab meeting is, is, is relatively new. And, and so right now we're really just letting the teens brainstorm. Um, they want to do a podcast. So we're working on that with them. Uh, they want to do newsletters. They have, they have a lot of ideas about outreach to outreach to schools, which ironically, a lot of them like, the ideas we already do, but mm -hmm. we're like, if you guys want to try, you go ahead. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, and then talking about like an Instagram posts and what the best social media place would be. And they talk a lot about how to best represent the library. They talk a lot about what the library is to them and what the forward face of the library should be. Now. Queen's mm -hmm. Library, Queen's Public Libraries is large enough that we do have a marketing department and we do have an image and a brand. Sure. And so we talk. They have as to work well. within that still. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those kind of things that can don't need be, to be in the library is what um, they could be doing. Yeah. Um, exactly. And, you know, and they can do book reviews. They can do book reviews, too. And um, we can we can put sure. them on the like Queen's Library blog and things and things yeah, like and that. Yeah, they can record them themselves or something. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, another question we we have here, you know, these are all, this is volunteer program that you have. Um, and you were talking about that this is something to get them understanding. Uh, uh, one of the things to get them to understand what the library does, what it's all about, because some of them don't know at all. Um, so these are all volunteers. Uh, do you guys do any sort of internship program with potentially paid internships or anything, or do you guys strictly have um, just volunteers at this level? Because I did mention earlier that we have a similar thing for the kids that are um, working in the library that are uh, underage. Um, here in Nebraska, we have a, an internship program where we we um, help uh, we give grants to our libraries to hire um, interns that can be anywhere from high school into college. Of um, you know, sometimes they're adult interns, but we have many of them, most of them, interestingly, do have teens do it. And its idea is to encourage them. Our main goal, if it ever happens, is to encourage them to become a librarian or work in the library in the end. Um, but do you guys do anything like that, or is yours most strictly just the volunteer type? Well, there's a program over the summer that New York City runs called Summer Youth Employment. And I think that starts at age 14. And we have had, um, we ha we have had participants in that come in, which is so so that is paid. I, yes. I don't know that we've ever called it an internship, mm -hmm. but uh, but they come in and they work they work in the library and they do projects they do projects for the for the summer, and I'm not involved with it, but I think at our central branch there have been youth services internships. 
I actually had I actually had um, someone ask me about it recently, and we're not doing it now um, because I haven't figured out how to make it virtual. I suppose. Yeah. But, yeah. So, but, sorry, yeah. we had that difficulty this summer. We had um, just issued our internships. You know, they were normally we do them like in the fall for work that they're going to be doing in the spring or summer. A lot of them doing summer reading program related um, activities, and yeah. all of our internships were awarded. And they start gearing up to do them in the spring, and then COVID shut everything down. Um, some of our internships, um, some of our libraries did tweak some of them to have more remote, um, you know, doing something different. And we just said, you know what, whatever you can get them to do, sure, you know, help with the curbside pickup or with the social media, you know, that wasn't what you're originally going to have them do, but that's fine. Um, we actually had to bump some of them. We actually, less than half, uh, they couldn't figure out a way to do it this year, but maybe next year they could because things may be better yeah. so some of our 2020 uh internship grants we have extended and said you can use them in 2021 we'll just bump you a year and try next year and maybe things will change enough um that we'll be able to use them now yeah i think that's happening with a lot of places where it just it's just on hold and just pick up where you left off you know in a year mm -hmm. yeah and things vary are very in different areas uh some places if there's not as much uh there's many flare-ups of the pandemic of, of the virus, then they can do more things in an area in, the, in our cities or our small towns where there's been more. They're like, nope, we are totally locked down. Nobody's doing anything. So from community to community here, we, you know, we support all the libraries in the state. Um, it can it totally vary. Yeah. yeah. You just work with what you can. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, all right. Anybody have any other questions, um, comments, or anything you've been doing at your libraries that you want to share? Uh, type in the question section. Um, we can get that information, you know, chat with yeah. Anne about this. You know, while we're waiting, I just want to say, you know, the, the work with what you work with what you can. I think that we, I think that, you know, what the pandemic has shown is really what libraries are, are capable of, because just the way the libraries have stepped up mm -hmm. and converted into this virtual virtual services and all the things that they've been able to do oh, yeah. has it's it's been a test that i think that they have uh libraries have just met and uh, you know above and beyond maybe even even mm -hmm. they maybe even what they expected themselves to be able to do so um, yeah i know i you know i started yeah that pandemic page there was and at the beginning, March, April, a lot of panic of deer in the headlights, maybe, of, uh-oh, now what? <laughs> but a lot of these things, these resources, um, being able to do, um, you know, Facebook Live videos or things on social media or YouTube or whatever, it was already there. It's just yeah. use it more. And I think what we were also learning is that, I, I mentioned this kind of in the beginning about how uh, some of the virtual things you may have volunteers or interns do, because because you have to be virtual right now doesn't have to stop you know after right. the pandemic done you can still keep doing those and we have heard a lot of reports now from libraries and from patrons and users of the libraries that they actually like all of the virtual things sometimes depending on their situation it's a better way for them to use the library than our traditional way parents who have kids that want to attend story time but I just don't have the time to drive my kid to the library at that time. Um, I work from home or whoever's babysitting just can't take the kid there because of whatever situation, but they could, I could put them on the computer and they can still participate in story time with all their friends. That was a huge thing for that child to still be able to, you know, be able to do that. I've never been able to bring them into the building um, because of um, anxiety issues that children have maybe, or things, social issues, but now they can still participate. And I think we're learning, this is something we could have been doing all along. And I think we should keep doing for all, but that's a huge um, user base that we didn't have before. <laughs> And now, yeah, absolutely, you know, you're getting people from all over the the country now, and even international, um, yeah. for, for programs. You know, we had um, Queen Queen Public Library had about a, a week where they were figuring things out, and then it just it just took off. Um, yeah, there's we have a gaming committee that has that had, runs games multiple times in a, a week, or a week or a month, and then uh, I co-run a, a teen writing club that yeah. has members from you know we don't know where and it's just um 
it's you know it's addition to in addition to it being an advantage for for the for the patrons it's also an advantage for the librarians because i'm able to collaborate now with other mm -hmm. librarians from queen's public library who i was never able to collaborate with before because we're at different branches but now now it doesn't matter now, yeah, we realized, oh, well, we could have been doing this all along because we have all this technology yeah. being forced into it has made us realize oh, every it's easier. <laughs> you know, I yeah, think so a lot I think, of good things will yeah, come out. It's going to continue, yeah. yeah. Yeah, lots of things will still continue. All right, well, it doesn't look, while we were chatting, doesn't look like anybody had any last minute desperate questions they wanted to ask. And that's great. Um, hopefully, we got everyone's comments or questions covered. Yeah, and you know, tell me. Email me yeah. if you think of anything else. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm there. Thanks. We're getting close to the top of the hour. So um, if you do have anything desperate you want to ask, get it into the chat while I'm wrapping things up here. Not a problem. Um, as Amber said, reach out to her. You've got her contact information there. She'd be happy to chat with you. And she wants to hear what you're doing too. So if you have any ideas or something, you know, like you just said, you're collaborating with your um, Queens Public Library uh, colleagues, but we can all collaborate all across the country. We have the yes. technology. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Um, and so I'm going to pull back the presenter control to my screen here again so that. There we go. All right. So we are recording, as I said, and the recording will be posted, like I said, probably sometime tomorrow. You'll hear from me. Our archives are right here underneath our upcoming shows. So I will send you a link and let you know that the archive is here. The most recent ones come up at the top of the page. Um, and you'll have a link to the recording and the slides. Um, Amber will send me a link, so we'll have that for you as well. While we're here, I'll show you, you can search our archives. We do have our full archives here on the page. So if you wanna look for a particular topic, see if we've talked about something about a church or certain library or certain something, um, go ahead and search for this. Uh, you can search our full archives or just the most recent 12 months. That is because this is our full archives, as I said, um, since Encompass Live premiered, which was in January, 2009. So we have over 10 years worth, I'm not gonna scroll all the way down because that would be crazy, but <laughs> over 10 years worth of, of recordings here. So do pay attention when you are watching a recording, just check the original uh, broadcast date. Um, they're all dated so you know when they first happened. Uh, many of our topics will stand the test of time, reading lists, things like that. But sometimes some things may become outdated, um, information may be old, links won't work, services or products may have changed drastically or don't even exist anymore. Uh, but we are librarians, we archive things, we keep things for historical purposes, and this is an easy thing for us to always keep up there as long as we have uh, somewhere to host and have our uh, recordings up, they will be here. Top here. Okay, so um, I'll send you that link information for our recordings tomorrow. Um, but we do also have a Facebook page. If you do like to use Facebook, give us a like over there and you can keep uh, up on what we're doing. Um, reminders is a reminder about today's show, um, information about our speakers, uh, previous shows. So, uh, do if you do like to use Facebook, you can do that. We also use a hashtag, you can see it here, NCUMP Live, a little abbreviation here on Twitter and Instagram. And I don't know wherever else our social media people are doing things now. I can't remember everything, but they're out there doing our, our promotion as well. So you can follow us there as well. Our next week's show will also be for about teens. Our uh, annual Best New Teen Reads. Um, this is one of 2020. Sally Snyder, our coordinator of Children's and Young Adult Library Services here at the Library Commission. Um, every year she comes on and does a teen reads session. So she's going to be doing that next week. There is also a companion show to that, the Best New Children's uh, Reads for 2020 that she does with one of our library staff here um, and one of our middle schools, I believe. And they're still working on a date for that. So look for the children's version you know, of this as well. This will be specific for the teen and there'll be one for younger children coming up. Uh, well, we're booked up through December. Um, it'll be either in January or February. So um, I'll look for that. So well, thank uh, you for having me today. It was, really, it was yeah, a pleasure. Thank yeah, thanks so much. Amy. I'm glad we were able to get here. Now, I know there's a uh, snow coming your way. Are you? Mm -hmm. Gonna be okay. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm looking. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm. I'm. Yeah. I'm working from home today, but tomorrow. I, tomorrow, I do have to have to go into the uh, go into the office. Well, so. hopefully, you'll be able to. <laughs> well, 
Oh, <laughs> <laughs> to be positive. Yes. Good luck with that. How's that? <laughs> Wherever I am, I will be working. So this is true. We can do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, yeah. Thank you so much. I was glad I was able to get you to come on talking about the teen volunteers. This is you know we do a lot of things here about teens and children. So I'm glad we we're able to get you. Um, yeah, I'm really glad I was able to meet you and learn about the Nebraska Library Commission. Awesome, it's great. Um, one last thing I do want to give a uh, promotion out about. Our big talk from small libraries is our annual online conference that I host here through the Library Commission. It's our 10th annual big talk from small libraries will be at the end of February. As always, the last Friday in February, and our call for speakers is open right now. So if you are at a small library, um, for us, small is um, you serve a population of 10,000 or less, and this would be public, academic, school, whatever. Um, put in a, a, a presentation proposal, and um, maybe you can get to be on our conference here. This is a national conference. We do anyone. We have speakers from across the country and attendees from across the country. Um, so the call for speakers is open so submit something and hopefully maybe we'll get you on our conference other than that thank you very much everyone for being with us this morning hopefully we'll see you on a future episode of encompass live okay. bye bye